So it's obviously the case that women make up more than 50%, at least 50% of the population, yet less than a quarter of them serve in Congress. And the reason why this is the case is because there are a lot more barriers that exist that prohibit women from running and even if they do run it's more difficult for them to get elected so what we have is a new justice democrats like organization that is designed to help women get elected so we can finally maybe inch closer towards parity in congress so with me to talk about a new organization called matriarch is its founders namiki konst and javanka beckles so thank you both so much for coming on the program uh, thank you for the invitation it's a pleasure Thank you, Mike. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again as well. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm sure that my audience is familiar with Namiki Konst. So um, we're going to start with Javanka and then we'll head over to Namiki and get a quick update. Javanka, tell us about yourself and your affiliation with the organization. Uh, well, let's see. I am a longtime activist. I've lived in the city of Richmond for a long time and decided to uh, decided that I could make a difference uh, by by running for office, so I ran for office in 2008. Uh, let me just back it up a little bit. I'm a, I, I work for the county as a children's mental health specialist, and uh, working with children and families, I see firsthand the challenges that families have. Uh, and and you know, in working to increase the quality of life for the families that I work with, I realized that there was something lacking, and what was lacking was policy. Uh, and so I decided to run for office. Uh, to be able to make a difference and create the kinds of policies that would help my family, specifically the families that I work with in West County, the majority being people of color. Uh, so I ran for office in 2008, uh, lost uh, by slim margin, uh, won in 2010, was re-elected in 2014, uh, ran for assembly because, again, city policy is one thing, and, and that's a good thing because we can do so much at the local level. Uh, but I realized that, all, that that there were policies that we couldn't implement at the local level. We needed some state policies. And so uh, I ran for off, uh, state office, state assembly uh, in 2018. Uh, we lost by, I would say, a small margin, uh, but it was a grassroots effort with very little money. Uh, and it was at that time that I realized how difficult it really is to run for a higher office working full time. I work full time. Uh, and it was very difficult for me to take off. And, you know, like my opponent, who was independently wealthy, uh, and uh, it really was a challenge. So when we started talking about it, and Miki contacted me and other women, uh, I thought this was a great idea because as working women, we, uh, particularly women of color, we really need uh, the boost and the support and the sisterhood that, that we are uh, building here. Yeah. How about you, Namiki? What have you been up to since we last talked to you? <laughs> I was like, she, she just, she just covered it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, well, you know, um, I did run for office this year, as as much of us uh, who are involved in Matriarch have. I would say about uh, fifty percent of our advisory group um, of over three dozen women is made up of, of women who have run for office, been in office, uh, or are currently in office. And one thing that just became very clear as I got to know so many of these women over the past few years in, in the progressive movement is there are obstacles that are just not laid out in a serious way uh, when you go to these trainings to run for office. So if you're a woman and if you've been interested in running for office, there are maybe a thousand different trainings out there. And one of the first things that they do uh, is say, okay, open up your Rolodex. And you're going to call every single person you know, and we want you to raise money. That might work for, for some people. Maybe it'll work up to a month. <laughs> but okay. for the most part, you know, unless you are independently wealthy or of, of means or have access to wealth, it is extremely hard to raise the amount of money you need to have a, a functioning campaign um, that can last, you know, several months. I ran in a special election. If I... If that special election had gone maybe one more month, I wouldn't have a home. And I'm being completely yeah. honest. Um, right. Most right. people have to balance jobs. You know, maybe they are single parents. Maybe there's a two-parent household and, and the other uh, parent has to take on or the partner has to take on uh, the, the extra burden. There's child care costs. There's rental costs. There's debt. And a couple of years ago, when Donald Trump was elected, we saw a record number of women being called to run for office and they stepped up courageously and did so but 
very quickly we saw the infrastructure was not there to support uh, everyday women in running because it's not just that it's hard to raise the money, uh, the organizations, the institutions that are out there right now, um, for the most part, are not recognizing their candidacy as, as quote, viable, that's the word that they use, yeah. um, for endorsement yeah. or yeah. support until they've raised like 150, 200, sometimes $300,000. And if you're not independently wealthy, I mean, it's even a struggle, a real struggle to get to $50,000. And the press won't pay attention to you also if you haven't raised a certain amount of money. So if you want to crowdsource, maybe you're not famous. Maybe you're you know, a community activist. Maybe you're a nurse. You're a teacher, a mom. I mean, there's so many different <laughs> professions, obviously, that don't get recognized. So uh, we wanted to fill that gap. Um, so for the last you know several months, I've been working with this, this incredible crew of women to come up with ways where we can help solve a lot of the, the infrastructure issues that women face when they're running um, for office, but specifically for uh, Congress for right now. And I really like that. When, when I first learned about Matriarch, my thought was, finally, because this is a working class version of Emily's List, essentially, where it helps working women, anti-establishment people who don't have that financial backing, uh, get elected to Congress. And there's already enough barriers if you choose to run, like political science studies show that women, generally speaking, in comparison with men, they don't feel as if they're qualified, which is untrue. And thankfully, it seems like we're kind of breaking away from that stigma after the 2018 election, when so many women across the country are running. But when you decide to run, it is incredibly difficult. It is self-sacrifice. And you need these types of organizations to back you up. Of course, you can do it alone, but it's a lot more difficult. So what this organization to me seems like is a Justice Democrats type of organization where we're saying, look, we're taking on the establishment and we're addressing the specific barriers that exist that prohibit women from actually being electorally viable and successful. And we absolutely need that because this descriptive representation is incredibly important. Like I cited the statistic about less than a quarter of women being in Congress. But when you um, when you actually look at women of color, it's 8.7 percent, which is abysmal. We need these voices in Congress. We need their perspectives in Congress. And there is this difference between descriptive and substantive representation. But more often than not, descriptive representation, just getting people in Congress that are representative of, you know, the public, demographically speaking, it leads to a uh, substantive representation, real change. So that's why this organization is so important. So I wanted to ask you, Javanka, in terms of what the short term goal is for 2020 and 2022. Um, how many women thus far, because you guys just launched, have basically answered the call because you can nominate a woman to run. Um, do you guys know just preliminary um, results as to what the response is? Because I find this incredibly fascinating and exciting. So what's the response been? Well, it's my understanding from the, you know, the uh, uh, co coordination that uh, the collaboration that we're currently undergoing there. It's been a really um, high number of women who are responding uh, either via through social media directly through us. And so I feel like that's really exciting that that women are feeling that, OK, finally, there's an organization that's really there to help us as working women um, that, uh, you know, grassroots candidates, uh, working people. Namki mentioned earlier, uh, nurses and teachers and, you know, myself as a as a mental health specialist. I mean, we have so many professional women that are 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 in the trenches every single day and and what better voice to represent us right as, as working people than than us uh, so i know that there has been I, I don't have the numbers uh in front of me but i know that we've had uh, overwhelming responses to uh to the call sort of a, a for action um uh, maybe normally you might be able to to fill that in in terms of the the actual numbers um, I don't have the number as as of the moment, but yeah. I say that it's it's coming in. I mean, every single time we check the monitor, it's like, oh, another one just came in. And what's incredible to see is the the number of women who've been nominated by several people, sometimes into the dozens, uh, from across the country, but especially from their communities. Um, it doesn't mean that it's exclusive. It just, it, I you know. We know that that community support is super important, but it's it's so amazing to see um, people around the country looking at races that may not 
you know, even close to them, but they're very curious about what happens in Texas, what happens okay. when Kentucky goes blue or Virginia goes blue, and they're investing in a national partnership, a progressive coalition, and um, and we're we're excited to be able to help facilitate that. Yeah, and I was going to say that I really see that you know we have a we have a movement, uh, and then we have some some amazing I think super women that that are leading the way thus far in in Ilhan and and you know Alexandria and and women are seeing that yes I'm an ordinary woman I can do this I know what the issues are shouldn't I be in a position to be able to create the kinds of policies to help us uh, through these issues and that help us to have a place at the table, a seat at the table. Um, so this is this is really exciting and, and I'm really so honored to be able to be a part of this amazing movement. Yeah, to me, this feels like a paradigm shift where before women were essentially shut out from politics unless they were wealthy, right? If, you, if you're wealthy, right. you can do pretty much anything. But if you're a working class woman who we want right. to represent us the most because there are mostly normal working class people in this country, then, you know, right. we need you to run. But there's so many obstacles that make it so difficult. So this it does feel like a paradigm shift in terms of more women getting involved and just, uh, you know, women really becoming the face of the progressive movement. I mean, you, you stated yeah. it, Ilhan Omar, um, we have uh, Rashida Tlaib, uh, AOC, yeah. I mean, Pramila Jayapal, mm -hmm. there's so many women who are now the face of the, move, of the movement. And now I think that that really sends a message to ordinary women who are just working women that, you know, I can do this as well because there are other role model, models who are leading the charge. So I think mm -hmm. that this is really nice to see, like so many people rally a around this one cause from different demographics and it's about damn time. So I wanted to ask you because this is a, a pack. So I want you to dis dis distinguish between a pack <laughs> and a super pack just so there's no confusion. Namiki, can you settle this for us? Because I saw a couple of tweets at the beginning when I when I kind of, I put out a tweet in support of Matriarch and you know, one of the first things I saw was, uh oh, this is a pack. Um, explain <laughs> what this is. Yeah, so I'm not an elections attorney, so please don't quote <laughs> that, okay? But from, from, disclaimer. Disclaimer. <laughs> but that's below. <laughs> My father would probably want me to be an elections attorney. <laughs> um, so, you know, there, there are not a lot of ways that groups can come together and facilitate assistance to candidates. And that's just based on the legal structure that we live in. Um, I think we've made the case very clear as to why it's important to have organizations out there that can help candidates out. Um, I know from my experience, it was extremely hard running when, you know, nobody thought we had a chance. Um, yes. We had to raise a certain amount of money and thank God for shows like yours, Mike, because you believed in us. And that really, your, your viewers helped get us to that level of where we needed to raise money. But not every candidate has access to Mike. Um, I was very grateful to. And so it's important to have organizations out there that can help at critical stages. So a PAC versus a super PAC. A super PAC is, you know, some billionaire can dump in his life savings and basically buy ads on TV. And, you know, and it's, if you saw Joe Biden is going to be a, a billionaire, maybe a few billionaires are going to be doing that for Joe Biden in his presidential race so that, you know, Joe Biden has limited campaign contributions that he can take as a presidential candidate. They're still extremely high, but they're limited. And so he's he's been unable to raise the, the amount of money he needs uh, to be viable. So, you know, maybe a few of his donors that have a lot of money and have maxed out can now put it into a super PAC and make up the difference and buy pro Joe Biden ads or maybe attack ads on other people. So that's the facility of the super PAC. It's also, you can put corporate money in there if you want to. A PAC is, is very limited. Um, the money you can receive is up to $5,000 and give is $5,000, uh, split into primary cycle versus general. So we want to be able to invest in candidates at a critical point where, um, you know, they, they need it. <laughs> when, when no one wants to give them money or attention, but we know we believe in them, we see their path whether it's to victory or to changing things on the ground in their community to be in, you know, because candidates can, can serve a lot of, 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 of purposes, right? They can be running to make a statement. They can be running, uh, you know, thinking maybe they don't have a chance this time, but the next time they will, because you know, much of this country has not been invested in by progressives or Democrats for, for 25 years, or they could be running because they have a real path to victory. And so we wanna invest in a candidate uh, that we believe in and 
um, and all for other resources. I mean, Javanka is one of our extraordinary women in our sisterhood that is opening up their time and energy into supporting and having the backs of these candidates. And so we, we don't have our slate of candidates yet, but uh, once we do, we're based on contributions, of course, we're going to be offering assistance um, in so many different ways. And that's something a super PAC doesn't do. Uh, that, you know, hopefully down the line, we'll be doing other um, educational you know, trainings, but uh, 2020 is underway. So we're, we're just trying to get as much done in this short period of time that we can to help candidates out that might be facing primaries earlier rather than later. Yeah. I hope that answers the question. No, that's that does. That totally answers the question. The takeaway for viewers essentially is that this is not a dark money group. Like this is a grassroots Absolutely. organization. Absolutely. And I'm going to put a link on the screen and really highly encourage you to donate because these organizations, like even though we all hate money in politics, you know, the problem is that it's a necessity if we do want to win. And if you want to empower matriarch to empower grassroots women, then they do need that money. And so even if you can chip in a dollar, you know, at a minimum or, you know, find out a way to support it, you know, otherwise, uh, that really does matter. It is important. This is basically a nationwide movement. Um, I don't view matriarch as like just one component, one thing. Like I view them as a microcosm of a bigger issue, as one part of our whole movement, you know, this labor movement, the women's rights movement. This is all just one collection. We're all in this together, basically, is what I'm trying to say in a convoluted way. So they need money. So if you could donate anything to them, that would be incredibly, incredibly helpful because these organizations, they really need a boost of money, especially at the beginning, like Justice Democrats, they had TYT and Secular Talk to really help right. boost their name. So we need to do this for Matriarch because this is important. This is a cause that really matters. And if we want to make sure that we up our chances of winning elections across the country, then we need as many organizations as possible. And this is an organization that is needed, that's much overdue, and they need your help. So I wanted to ask you guys, this is kind of a generic question, but I do think it's important because a lot of people, they just kind of feel as if they're overly cynical. I can kind of, you know, uh, sympathize with that viewpoint. And if you're a woman in this country, you, you kind of see the trajectory that we're on, right? You know, women's rights issues kind of is put on the back burner. We have Donald Trump in president who's incredibly misogynistic. So if you're a working woman, uh, what is your message to them? And why do you think that they should run for Congress in spite of what they might think personally? Right. Well, because our, our women's issues are, you know, is intersectional, right? We, we, you know, we are black, we are queer, we are immigrants, we are mothers, sisters, right? It's a, you know, our issues uh, uh, are intersectional and no matter, you know, where we come from, what our background, maybe even our passion, as long as we have the, as long as we have the passion uh, and support, because there's no way I could have even ran a successful uh, assembly race without so much support, without the grassroots um, passion that comes along with that and knocking on doors. So no matter you know where where you come from, uh, as long as you recognize that problem in society um, that there is injustice, particularly as women and women of color, you know we experience injustice every single day, and so we recognize it, we see it firsthand, we look at it in the eye, uh, and so knowing that. Knowing what the solutions are, policy, creating the kinds of policies. We are not getting the policies that we need uh, from men, <laughs> and we're not getting it from white men. Um, and so we have to look to each other, right, for those uh, for the for the change that we, we want to create. So I say it is a scary thing. Uh, our lives change when we run for office, and and having to do it full time is really what helps it helps us to be successful. Um, but, you know, but but do it and go for it and, and you will not be alone. And that's what's so powerful and, and, and beautiful about this organization is that we are a sisterhood. We, we, we recognize the challenges uh, and we, we've got your back. You know, the message is that you're worthy. Like what I try to tell people is that you are qualified to run for Congress if you care about yes. political issues. Because think exactly. about some of the people who are serving. Like we have Louis Gohmert as a sitting member of Congress. If he can do it. <laughs> Anyone can do it. You are qualified. So I like to use that as an example to put it into perspective because we need you. Like representation is so crucial. Javanka made such a good point 
about the policies that are being passed because there's a 2014 Princeton University study by Drs. Gillens and Page that I like to cite that, you know, when it comes to policy outcomes, average citizens, they have zero impact. It's statistically insignificant, but elites and special interests, they actually do have a substantial impact. So we're getting policies passed that benefit rich people and rich people disproportionately are white dudes. So if right. we want to change that, we have to start changing the structures. And that means we increase representation for women. It's absolutely Absolutely crucial. So, um, Namiki, any lasting thoughts that you want to leave us with? And I want to give you both the opportunity to make the last pitch to donate because this is incredibly important. This is a grassroots movement and money is needed in order to get these types of organizations off the ground because that money, it's not just going to matriarch. What, what you do is you train candidates, you help them, you give them money. And this really helps. Like Justice Democrats was incredibly instrumental in electing AOC. And we want lots of mm -hmm. AOCs. We want mm -hmm. to broaden the squad. So we want Ivanka's. Absolutely. We need more people to get in power in Congress and represent us. And like we see how AOC and Ilhan Omar, for example, are doing such a great job nationally speaking. So if we broaden that, I mean, think of the change that we, we really could accomplish. So Namiki, what's the last pitch that you want to make? And any lasting words from uh, both of you? Yeah, just some lasting words in terms of um, the electability factor. You know, there there has been a movement over the last, you know, 70 years, but really the last, you know, 40 years in particular to uh, elect women to reach parity in Congress. What that means is a little bit, you know, so we have equal representation in Congress. And we've had a couple of really great years in which, uh, one of which was 2018, where record number of women were elected. And and, you know, there was one, I think, in 1992 and then in 2006. But one thing to keep in mind there is that, um, yes, record number of women ran because they were fed up with the system. They were fed up with Republicans who had really betrayed the country, whether it was, uh, you know, Bush senior or it was Republicans during the war um, in Iraq. And of course, you know, in 2018, it was post Trump. But we have to think beyond those moments, beyond the like critical mass, horrible Republican yeah. moments. We have to think, what does it mean to build an infrastructure so we reach parity? And I think what's unique about Matriarch is we have a platform that is intersectional. It's a platform based on economic justice, the Green New Deal, yes. taking no corporate money and, and, and supporting candidates that don't take corporate money, um, looking at reproductive rights as reproductive justice issues, uh, criminal justice reform, and all of the, the progressive movement issues in, in, the, in the best form possible. Um, with the root of no corporate money, because we think that, you know, if you, you take corporate money, um, it'll it trickles up from there. And then it's that old parable about a, a, a frog being boiled in a in a pot. And of course, we know that. parable. Mm. So if we're electing and looking for women who come from working backgrounds and can relate to these issues personally, firsthand, then they have that special connection with their communities. They know the, the issues that their communities face. They take those issues that they face firsthand or, or closely into Congress. And then as we see with the squad and Pramila Jayapal and Barbara Lee, I mean, there's so many women throughout history who have been elected and, and defied the obstacles that took that energy into Congress. Now imagine equal representation with women like that. We think they're more electable. Um, we think that they just, you know, they need infrastructure support. They need uh, other women and other and men, of course, like yourself, having their backs, but they need that support the way that the centrists support their their millionaires and billionaires. We got to do the same thing for our movement. And I think the ecosystem is is growing and we're just another uh, piece of that. So please, if you can uh, chip in some bucks, as, as Mike said, it's supporting everything from um, our incredible team that's going to be providing resources to candidates, whether it's mentorship from our board of advisory or uh, trainings or you know, we have some fun things in store that I don't want to, I don't want to unveil yet. Uh, and of course, you know, financial assistance uh, is important as well. So thank you. Yeah. Any lasting words from you, Javanka? I just say thank you. Well, uh, well said, Nomiki. Um, just you know that it, it it takes all of us, right? And 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 all it takes is just a little bit of either our time or our resources. And you know, the sum of that um, is is really you know what would what's going to help um help this movement and so any little bit of of money any bit any little bit of any of your resources um we would appreciate uh because we're only going to continue to get the kinds of policies that 
uh, that increase the wealth of the elite class um, if we keep electing white men. Um, so in order for us to have the policies uh, that really benefits us all, uh, we need women who understand the struggles and the challenges that we face. So uh, thank you for, for having us on the show and, and, those, and those of you who are viewing, thank you for supporting this organization. We can't do it without you and the women that are running definitely can't do it without you. So, without you. so thank you in advance for all of the support that you're bringing. And thank you both for coming on to Mickey Const, Javanka Beckles. Um, the website is matriarchpack.com. Let me just make my pitch for you all because I think that it's important that I always try to put this into perspective for people. When you donate, this is kind of like an investment. Like you're putting in money into an organization that will yeah. later essentially pay you back. Like I always use the, and I, I people criticize me because I use Very this nice. example every time, but it's really important to me. So Ilhan Omar, she's not my representative. She lives, you know, in a different state. But she introduced a bill that would cancel all student loan debt. That's pretty important to me personally, right? Yeah. So when we donate to these candidates, even if they are not our representatives, that still is beneficial. So by donating to Matriarch, you are donating to an organization that is going to help push the envelope further in, ter in terms of um, getting representation for women and getting policies passed that impact every single person, namely working people and working women. So thank you both for coming on and making the case. I'm Thanks. incredibly excited. We will be following and I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, candidate list. Thank you, Mike. All right. Thank you so much, Mike.